What's up guys we're here we're back with another edition of pitching 101 i am going to shoot to not make this a 25 minute lecture that you might see in a high school classroom and more into a shorter um a little bit easier to chew uh heavily edited version of of those type videos with a little bit less information and a little bit of a less of a use for no a notepad for you to write down uh, uh notes Today, we're going to focus very hard on um, building a foundation to become a better pitcher, all right? Before we get really get into the video, I want to highly recommend consuming two other pieces of content that I've done. One, there is a podcast that I used to do called The Trevor May Podcast. It is available on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. It's free. There is an episode. I can't exactly remember which one. There's only like 12 total, so you can you can tell by the titles which one they are. That really goes into depth with the idea of um, AFE or IFE, as I call it. The process of throwing a pitch. The simple breakdown of a step-by-step -step process of, of throwing a successful pitch. All right? Secondly, go back and watch my YouTube video, My Pitches and Why I Throw Them. That's going to give you a little bit of more information that will help you um, continue with the things that I'm talking about in this video. As we move forward here, this is an ongoing project, guys. Like, this isn't like a, I don't have a textbook that I wrote and that I am now, now translating into YouTube. I am kind of making this stuff up as I go, or not making it up, but coming, bringing it together, right? Today, we're going to, it's called Building a Foundation. Today, we're going to talk about intent, IFE is intent, focus, execution. The three-step process of throwing a pitch is creating the intent in your mind, what you want to accomplish, focusing on that thing you want to accomplish, then executing the pitch. Rinse and repeat over and over again. That is, in the simplest terms, what you're doing when you're pitching. So having that understanding goes a long, long way. It helps you identify things that you're not as good at and very specifically practice those things. In the podcast, I talk a lot about how focus was a lot of my problem and it's something that I've gotten much better at and I've seen results because of it. There are some very concrete strategies that I would love for you to to, to try at home and to, to do as you go into your next season. And remember, always remember, when we're talking about intent, Simplicity is key. So first off, something that I believe every pitcher should do at some point, whether you're 12 years old, um, going into high school, um, playing Legion ball, maybe college summer ball would be huge. Going into your first professional season or you've been a pro player for a long time. I think every pitcher should do something called a spots diagram. This is my example of a spots diagram. Everybody throws certain pitches. They have certain feel for certain pitches and their ball moves in a certain way. Starting this process will go a long way in keeping the, the art of pitching as simple for you as possible. Basically, it is a nine quadrant strike zone. This is a strike zone. This is me facing the plate. On the right side of the screen will be a right-handed hitter. On the left hand of the screen will be a left-handed hitter. The top of the zone is red. Those are only fastballs. I don't throw any off-speed pitches at the top of the zone on purpose. We will discuss in a moment how I make the decisions on where I want to throw my pitches. However, this is just where I want to throw them. So I'm going to explain how it goes. Purple is a combination of blue and red. So I want to be able to throw a fastball down and into my glove side. When I'm facing it, my glove is on my left hand. That means a left-handed hitter. So down and into a lefty would be glove side. Down and away to a lefty would be would be arm side. So down and in, I want to be able to throw the purple box is my slider and my fastball. The only blue side outside of the zone here is my slider. Then we go over here and the, at the bottom we have teal. Teal is my slider and my changeup, green and blue. I want to be able to throw my changeup right at the bottom of the zone down the middle or below it. Same with my slider. I want to be able to do that. On the right, we have brown. Brown is my changeup and my fastball. I want to be able to throw my changeup down in the way to a lefty or down and into a righty every time. That is the more where I'm most comfortable. If I can hit that spot, I will not be hurt on it for the vast majority of the time. I decided that these are the things I wanted to master, and I wasn't going to worry about anything else beyond that. I want you to sit down with your coach, your dad, whoever it is that is influences you on the baseball field. Draw a uh, nine-box strike zone, take the pitches that you throw, and decide where you want to throw them. Now, what goes into deciding where you're going to throw them? I throw a riding fastball. has very little downward movement and, and defies gravity longer. Again, in my previous videos, that is something that I talked about 
quite a bit. So I throw my fastballs up in the zone, I throw my changeup down in the zone, and I throw my slider down in the zone as well. Those are the things I wanna do. I feel like I can get my slider to that side of the plate every time. I feel like I can get my changeup to that side of the plate every time. I think that when I need a swing and miss out of the zone, my fastball can go above the zone and my breaking balls can go below the zone. For you, if you are younger, um, just having an idea like, okay, I want this not in the zone or I want this in the zone, that is enough. It is making that decision first and then going from there that will that will help translate into success. Again, this is clarifying what your intent might be on a regular basis. Clarifying your intent will give you confidence that you can do it. And as we know, as, as every sports psychologist and every coach has ever said, confidence is key, is key in sports. Now, how do I make the decisions on what I, what I want to throw? There's a tool called BaseballSavant.com. Uh, the tool we're going to be using is the StatCast tab right here. And it gives me locations for all of my pitches all year. Okay, So this is something that I would look at. In addition to other, this is similar to what we can get in the major league level. Of course, we have a lot more, a lot of information, right? This is, we have video analysis and actual plot graphs. So if I click on any of these pitches, it'll show me the clip. It is attached to a clip. It's a really cool service. So I want to use, for example, my slider as a well-clumped version of that, that little quadrant down here. That is exactly where I, I put it in my, my spots diagram, and I hit it quite a bit. Now, if I go to any of these these pitches you'll see how the ball moves i want to go down and away i don't want to throw a ball right down the middle and let's see how we do it alberto for three a couple of fly ball outs and a ground down but if you saw how that moved the angle's tough to see but according to the plot graph very little left and right movement a lot of depth so if i want to throw it here it's going to have to start here and that's just how my slider moves and that understanding helps me figure out how i'm going to get the ball to that spot then we have an example so my slider was a pitch that was very very well clumped again my, my forcing fastball, I was very good at keeping it along the edges and at the, at the top of the zone. Here's a pitch up and in. I wanted to go up and in top of the quadrant here because my ball rides so, in it, so and I'm added, able to hit that spot well. Let's see if we do it. Help pick up that. Hopefully the young hitters continue to grow into that also. Strong. We do. That's perfect. As I make decisions, I'm able to go to this resource. How you can use this resource or use a resource similar or create a resource for yourself. It takes a little more work if you're in high school, but in college you might have the tools. There's two things you can do. Get video. Set up a camera behind you as, as straight on as you can so you can see movement and try to get the best idea of how your pitches move as possible. We're creating a baseline here. Understand how your pitches move. Hitter, hitters react, reacting to your pitches plus how what you see will create that kind of picture in your head, which will help you make your spots diagram. Two, if possible, get in front of some sort of track man or Rapsodo machine that, that, that is able to give you a movement plot, shows you actually how the ball ha did move and or does move regularly. Your spin rates and things of that nature as well. It'll tell you if you have ride or if you have sink. It'll tell you if, if you're based on how much X and Y axis movement you have, those machines can give you a good example of how those things work. If you throw a sinker that really, really sinks, if you throw a sinker that doesn't sink very much, maybe you should try four seams, things of that nature. That'll help you create your diagram. When I'm at home or in the off season, I use this. All right, so I want to give you a very, very good example of a guy who follows his plan very, very well. Jacob DeGrom. Okay, Jacob DeGrom is one of the best pitchers in the league every year. You can see by how he's the top of the league at literally every com everything except for curve spin, but that's really irrelevant to him. Um, and you can see where his locations of his pitches are. Slider, it's kind of a cutter, has a lot of side-to-side -side movement, a little bit less depth, and he throws it to his glove side like crazy, and it sweeps. Because he gets the side-to-side -side movement, he gets lots of pitches off the zone. I'm sure a lot of those are swung at. This is on purpose. So that's a very good clustering of the pitches. Changeup, he stays on the other side of the plate. Similar to me. I'm trying to go arm side with the changeup, and I'm trying to go glove side with the slider. Glove slide slider, arm side changeup. Does it very, very well. Fastball. He throws a riding fastball, and look at that. Top of the zone, vast majority, gets chases off in, and, and it's less at the bottom of the zone, way more at the top of the zone. He has a riding heater, guy swing under it, he wants to throw up in the zone, and he does it very well. These are his three main pitches, and the clustering shows you he throws them to where he wants them majority of the time, and he's Jacob DeGrom. Just pr these are prime examples of guys knowing the quadrant they want to be able to throw a certain pitch every time, whenever they need it, and go there. And that's it. That is pitching. So, in conclusion... I would highly recommend you making your own spots diagram. Sit down, make a nine quadrant strike zone, get out some highlighters or some colored pencils or something, start highlighting where you think you can throw your pitches consistently and with confidence. Start there. If you don't know what, 
pitches you can throw yet? Ask your coach what he thinks. Ask your uh, dad what he thinks. Ask your teammates what they think. What do you think my best pitch is? You've, you've faced me. What do you think? What's the hardest to hit? And start to create that idea, that plan, that understanding of you. As we play ball and as we move up, we want to create an understanding of us, of who we are as players. So I recommend you creating a spots diagram and working through the process of creating that thing consistently by taking video of yourself and if possible, get in front of a rap soda or a track man or talk to someone who's familiar with that and maybe they can help you if they've seen you before. More, more than anything else, do not be afraid to make adjustments. If you're 14 years old and you make your spots diagram and you are a different pitcher at 16, make adjustments. Always be revi revisiting it. If you're struggling, go back to your diagram, look at it and you're like, how well am I doing this? And if you're doing it well, there might be something wrong with the diagram itself, try to make an adjustment. Constantly give yourself actionable information to continue to get better. I strongly believe that these just starting here and doing these things it takes five minutes to start will, will help you become a better pitcher. Thank you so much for watching part one of Building a Foundation Pitching 101. Um, part two of the series will cover focus. Um, the third part is, is execution, but that's going to be its own series. So we're going to just go part one and part two, um, intent and focus. Uh, I just wanted to thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you don't already. Uh, make sure that notifications are turned on so you know when there's brand new videos. Also, I don't know if you knew this, um, if you follow me on social media. Um, if you don't, it's at TrevMay65 on Instagram. I'm Trevor May on Twitter. Um, but if you don't, I also play video games quite a bit. I'm a Twitch streamer. I am Trevor May on Twitch. And there are tons of, of non-baseball highlights of me playing games and having fun with my buddies on here, too. So don't forget to check those out if that's something you're into. Um, I, I very much appreciate you being here. Don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. And give me any sort of topic you want to hear about in the future. Uh, hopefully, I can get into a space soon um, and start to get some some slow motion cameras on me. My own rap soto would be, or or track man would be wonderful, so I can really put this stuff into action and show you what I'm talking about um, as I prepare for next season. Thank you guys, and I hope you have a wonderful day. See you next time.